Good morning and uh, welcome to 4.3, the addition rule for probability. Uh, basically, the addition rule makes uh, our, our probability start to expand a little bit. And in fact, you've kind of done the addition rule already. Uh, as an example, if I said, what is the probability of getting a five when you draw from a deck of cards. Technically, I really am saying, what is the probability you get the five of diamonds or the five of clubs or the five of spades or the five of hearts? Um, I don't know exactly why they don't start that off, but uh, they don't. So here's the, the, the next section. The key word here is the or. So addition rule goes with or. Uh, the next time after spring break, we come back and we switch this to and. And that would be the multiplication rule. But right now we're on or, which is the addition rule. So I have, uh, I have sent you the notes. Uh, I'd like you to print those out if you haven't already. And... Uh, uh, so pause this and go print those out because I'm just basically going to go down the notes uh, from this. And let me do something really quick here. I should have done this already. Where's my cursor? Ah, I don't want to move that. Ah! I want to go over here. There we go. There we go. Okay. So uh, the first question is, what is the probability, speaking of fives, what is the probability of getting a five or a spade? A five or a spade. So we call it the addition rule. So we would think of things like this. We would think of saying, well, let's write it as the probability of five plus, change the or to a plus, the probability of getting a spade. Okay, well, the probability of getting a 5 is 4 out of 52. And then the probability of getting a spade is 13 out of 52. And we would add those together and get 17 out of 52. There is a problem. The problem is the 5 of spades. That's my best spade. The five of spades is the problem because I'm counting the five of spades here and I'm counting the five of spades here. So what I have to do is subtract the five of spades because I've already counted it. Now, that's called mutually exclusive. I do not like those terms. So I call it overlap. I call it overlap. So our formula for this is the probability of 5 plus the probability of spades minus the probability of the 5 of spades. So on your notes, I'm asking you to write that out. We'll talk about this in a second more and more as we go along. So it says the probability, here's the official formula then, the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which simply means if you go back, if you go to some somewhere along the line, you probably saw something called a Venn diagram. This is A, this is B. This is the probability of A is this whole circle. The probability of B is that whole circle minus one of these because you counted it twice. Okay? This is when you ans ask the question, do, eh, do they overlap? There's the question. Do they overlap? And you say, yes, they overlap. Then I'm going to have to do this. Number two, example two says, find the probability that you get a seven, so if I erase this, or a jack. 
a seven. Oh, that's not showing up. Very well. There we go. Or a jack. Well, the question is, do the sevens and the jacks overlap? And the answer is no. Their Venn diagram looks like that. Sevens and jacks do not overlap. So what's the difference? This is number two now. So what's the difference in this formula? Well, in this formula, then, this goes away. You don't have to worry about it. The probability of a 7 is 4 out of 52. And the probability of a jack is 4 out of 52. So your answer is simply 8 out of 52. Okay, so that's the first part of the notes. Then we go to uh, wording again. It says, what is the difference between the two examples? This is number one, not example one or example two, but number one. That was kind of stupid on my part. Uh, it says, what is the difference between the two examples? And it's this concept of overlapping. Do they overlap? And on this question, I'm sorry, on this question, it should have been a no. Okay, do they overlap? So the keyword, number two, the keyword is the or, and the question you ask is, do they overlap? So some of them are very straightforward. The beginning of it is straightforward, your homework. The second part of it gets a little... Uh, did I screw this up? Where are we at? This one, I got, I got a technical difficulty. There we go. It was recording. I'm okay. Uh, so here's our next little section on the notes. It says number three. So it's got this chart. I hope you can read that pretty good. Yep, you got that over there. Uh, part A. It says. Find the probability that if I pick one person, they chose blue. Find the probability that if I chose one person, they chose blue. Well, that's a pretty straightforward uh, question. There are 249 total people, and the total of blue is 140. So the answer to 3A, which is under the chart, is simply 140 out of 249. B says they chose red. So what is the probability of red or 6 to 10 hours? So our first question, once we see the or, our question is, do they overlap? Here's one way to think about it. Red looks like this. Here's red, and here's 6 to 10. And you tell me, do they overlap? Yes, right there at the 35. They overlap. That 35 is going to be counted twice. So the probability of red is 109 out of 249 plus 77 out of 249 minus 35 out of 249. Because of the overlap, they you have to subtract that 35. Part C says, what about picking somebody from 1 to 5? Part C says 1 to 5 or 11 to 15. Well, 1 to 5 is this group. 11 to 15 is this group. Do they overlap? The answer is no. So that's 74 out of 249. I'm down here at the bottom. Plus 98 out of 249. But there is no overlap, so I do not have to subtract. Okay. Then we go to the back page. 
and we're reviewing complements. We're reviewing complements. I can erase all of this now. No, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I need this chart still. So this was red and this was blue. Complements. Remember this? Uh, the probability of not A. That just means it's not A. So our example is eating broccoli is 63%. So the I'm going to go over here. No, you can see it. The probability of eating broccoli is 63%. So what's the probability of not eating broccoli? That'd be 37%. 37 plus 63 is 100%. That's all that is. But why is it important over here? Why is it important over here? Because then I can ask a question like this. Uh, if I pick one person who watches TV 11 through 15 hours or they have red as their favorite color, that's, a, that's the one we did before. Uh, part B says, if I pick one person, they watch TV greater than five hours. Greater than five hours. Greater than five hours. That means, mm, I props. there we go. That means I need the 6 through 10 and the 11 through 15. Now, this is not a big deal on this chart, but if you had a bigger chart, this might make a difference. So if I look at that, those two are not, they do not overlap. So part B at the bottom, part B at the bottom would simply be the 77 over 249 plus the 98 over 249. That's not a that's not a hard one to do. But if you had a hundred of these and it was this, 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 and this, you might say, you know what? This is the only one not chosen. So would it be better to say 249 out of 249 minus the 74 out of 249? That's the idea of the complement. It might be easier to just do this math than to add 100 of these together. Because all of these add up to one, uh, 298 or two, 249, sorry, 249. All of these add up to 249. And I do not want this one. So why not just take that minus that, and that gives me the rest. That's the idea of using a complement in this section of the, chap of the, of the uh, chapter. So to go over it again, Really quick, the addition rule, the keyword is or. The question you always ask is, do these things overlap? And if they do overlap, I have to worry about subtracting, subtraction. If they do not overlap, then I don't have to worry about subtraction. And the other part is the complement is always adds up to one or 100%, depending on what you're in, okay? So that's about it for uh, that section. The homework is on page 156. It's 8 through 22 even. I do want to tell you that, that on 22, they start the problem on one page, but then they finish it on another page. So it kind of is misleading. You read it and you go, uh, what's going on? Well, make sure you go to the next page because uh, that's where the math is, the questions are. All right, this will be due Friday, so the last thing before spring break. Next week, we will not be doing anything because it is your spring break. And then uh, the following week, we jump back in and we do the multiplication rule, which is and. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that we have extended the, the uh, 
quarantine. So we'll be doing more of these. Please let me know if these are helping. I, I can take the criticism. Uh, let me know if they're helping or if you need more information. If they're too short, maybe they're too long. Uh, but that's about it. So uh, enjoy this. Uh, please, please, please make sure you're turning your work in. Okay? Thank you very much. Let me figure out how to close this out before I say goodbye. There we go. Now I need a cursor.